I have a walk-in freezer that is down. So let's take a look here. So we're at 65 degrees. So room temperature. Things completely down. So let's do our visual checks. First thing, are we calling for cooling? So I got my little indicator on there, yes. The fans are not running. Let's see if our coil is frozen. The coil is not frozen. Let's check our solenoid. Our solenoid's getting power, which is telling us we have a call for cooling. So let's jump up on the roof here and see what's going on on the roof. So yeah, it's super early in the morning here. Sorry, it's gonna be dark. Uh, some of the some of the footage is not gonna be great, but so first thing I did there was a visual check. My condenser fan is running. All right, so our condenser fan is running. So let's go look at the schematic here. First things first, let's find the load and let's work backwards. So condenser fans running, which means I do not have to take a reading off this. So let's run this backwards. So L1 is coming off of this guy here, off of T1, which is off of L1, which is straight shotting through our circuit breaker and our terminal block and all this good stuff. And we're straight shotting to the top here. So I know this line is complete. It doesn't mean it's complete to the compressor, but it's complete to that section there. And let's go ahead and draw off our L2. So our L2 is coming off of our T3, which is coming here through the contactor, through the circuit breaker, and we're gonna branch up to our L3. So, so far we can draw this off on the schematic, okay? So the next thing I want to check is to see if we're getting power coming out of this contactor to the compressor. So there's a couple places we can test at this point. Okay, we can come in and come right off here. Okay, next point is the incoming of the contactor. I want to go on the outgoing of the contactor right here, okay? So I'm going to come and test here, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1. And the reason why I'm going to test here is because I don't have to test all these other points. Okay, we can skip all these. Now, if we don't have proper power here, yes, we're going to work backwards. But we want to work efficiently, okay? And it's super cold today, and it's really dark. So I want to work as efficiently as I can and test the least amount of points that I need to. All right, so we're gonna test all three phases like I just described. We have 210 on all three phases. Next, I'm gonna check for amp draw. We have zero amps. We now have 39 amps and zero amp. All right, so we confirmed now we have full power coming out of this contactor. Okay, it doesn't mean any one of these wires can't be broken, okay? And the fact that we had 39 amps, then we went to zero amps, it's telling me we've gone off on the compressor overload. So next, I want to test right at the compressor. Let's go right there. Make sure there's no broken wires. Make sure we have proper voltage right at the compressor. All right, so at the compressor, I have 211 volts on all three phases. L1 to L2, L2 to L3, L3 to L1. All right, so based on that, we can finish our line here. L1 has power. L2 has power. And finally, L3 has power at the compressor. All right, so now I wanna see why we're tripping on overload. So I'm going to do an ohm test. So let's go L1 to L3, we have open line. L2 to L3, we have open line. And finally, L1 to L2, we have 30.3 ohms. All right, so what does that mean for us? So between two and three, we had resistance, okay? Between one and two, we were open, okay? We never made a connection point here, open line. Between one and three, we never made a connection here. So this is open line, so what does it all have in common? This terminal right here, our T1 or L1, whatever you wanna call it, uh, this winding here is open. 
All right, so I believe that L1's open, so I'm gonna let it cool down. It's cooled down for about 20 minutes. I wanna make sure there's refrigerant in the system. There is refrigerant in the system. So let's go ahead and test this L1 winding once again. And as you can see, we're still open line. All right, so this compressor is only 18 months old, so I need to figure out why it blew again. Okay, so I'm gonna do a two second acid test here, and let's see what happens. So I can't really compare it to the color charting, it's not really going to show up great here, but this test here is showing that there is no acid in the system. Alright, so the next thing I want to test is my crankcase heater. I really need to figure out why this compressor has failed. So first thing, like always, let's find the load. And let's draw the lines out. So let's start with the blue side. So this is coming right off of here. And we're going to straight shot all the way back here. And we're going to find that this one's coming right to L3. So what that means is the blue side is always hot. Now let's draw the red side out. So we're coming through here. We're coming through our normally closed auxiliary switch. So let's go locate that. So what that is, is it's just a little auxiliary switch or a little piggyback that's on the compressor contactor. So when the contactor is not pulled in, so it's not engaged, we get power through this switch right here. Okay? So the only way that that crankcase heater comes on is if the compressor contactor is not engaged, which means the compressor is not running. We don't want them running at the same time. Okay? So let's go complete our circuit here. And this is going to come all the way back through here. And it's going to come back to our L1. Okay. So now we need to figure out how are we going to get this switch to get closed. So it's very simple. If we don't want the contactor to be engaged, okay, what engages the contactor? The contactor coil. So let's go locate that load. So it's right here, drawn with our circle. So all I really need to do is remove this red wire right here. My contactor plunger will no longer be engaged and this auxiliary contact will be closed and we should have full power at the crankcase heater. So let's go pull that wire off and let's go see if we have power coming to this crankcase heater. Alright, so I've pulled that coil wire off, that red 19. Okay, we're going to fire the power back up. And we're going to test for voltage at the crankcase heater. Sorry, I can't really get the camera in here to test at the same time, but we are getting 210 volts at the crankcase heater. All right, so our circuit is complete here, how we drew it. So we're getting 210 volts to the crankcase heater. So next, I want to make sure the crankcase heater is bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the wires from both sides. So in this case, I'm going to disconnect one side, red wire 8, the other one blue from this common terminal right here and let's see what kind of ohm reading we get all right so let's get that blue wire 5 taken off and you actually don't need to take the red side off you just need one side open but just for the sake of the schematic i said to take both wires off i'm just going to take one off so i'm going to go to the auxiliary normally closed contact number one and we have open line. We have a failed crankcase heater. All right, so that means that was the cause of the failed compressor. So let's get the compressor up on the roof and let's get started on changing out this compressor. All right, so I got the compressor out. Uh, it was a little semi hermetic compressor. All right, so now we're in our nitrogen test. just going to do a quick uh, electronic leak test. I'm probably going to leave the nitrogen in here for, it's going to be at least a 30 minute test, maybe even longer, we'll see. I'm going to take my time with this one, make sure we're all good. Let's just hit the fast forward here, beep all the joints, find that there's not going to be any leaks. And we're all good, we are ready for our vacuum and recharge. 
All right, so at this point, I'm gonna do a more thorough acid test. I'm actually gonna test the oil inside of the compressor. I don't know how much I test that, trust that two second test. Uh, it was suggested to me that I should do this. So let's just go ahead and do it. This test is like 10 extra dollars. So I'm okay with spending the extra 10 bucks and let's just get it done. Let's be confident. So all you really do is mix these two solutions together. And then you're gonna dump the oil into the other little spare vial they give us here. Try not to make a massive mess. I got a towel here just to make sure. Uh, it's a little, I'm gonna be a little funny tipping this thing over, but we'll tip it over. Fill her up. So it says to fill it right up and then we're gonna dump it right into that other solution that we just mixed together and based on the color it's going to tell us if there's any acid in the system and uh, not too bad there for making a mess it did pretty decent thought it'd be a lot worse all right so let's open this guy up let's dump her in and see moment of truth poured it in now the next step is to mix it together so let's pop that cap back on shake it up really good and let's see the results that we're gonna get from it and I'm not don't remember exactly how long you have to mix it for I don't know if it was 10 or 20 or 30 seconds I think it was 10 or 15 seconds Either way, I followed the instructions. And based on that, we do not have acid in the system. All right, so now we're gonna go charge the unit. So I'm just gonna go into how we're gonna calculate the head pressure. Obviously we have a psych glass to know where it's charged, but I wanna really hammer home the point of knowing your pressures and more importantly, knowing what your saturation temperatures are. That's really the key here. So usually we do ambient plus 30. So in this case, it's two Fahrenheit. If we add 30, we're gonna get 32 Fahrenheit. And that's just way too cold. Okay, if we go to 32 Fahrenheit. So 32 Fahrenheit would be right here. 72 PSI, okay? We need a minimum of 90 Fahrenheit saturation temperature for this system to work. Okay, so this is where our head pressure control is gonna come in and do its magic. Okay, so I'm always looking for 90 to 95, but usually I say that I'm looking for 92 to 95. So it depends on what the temperature is outside, but I'm looking for 92 to 95 Fahrenheit. Saturation temperature, okay? So based on that, 92 to 95, it's going to be right here in our wheelhouse, which is going to give us 208 to 218 is what we are looking for. So we're looking for 208 to 218 PSI. So let's go charge up the unit and see how that works out for us. All right, so our sight glass is still bubbling. Okay, we're at 86 saturation. So at this point, we're gonna focus on saturation temperatures. We have seven pounds in the system, okay? So let's go ahead and dump some more in. So now I'm at 90 saturation. Sight glass is still not full, okay? So we need to dump in more refrigerant here. Let's focus on our saturation temperature. Let's make sense out of this, boom. Sight glass is full, finally. 94.6 saturation temperature. All right, now we're gonna go adjust our superheat and do a quick stress test on the unit. So what I did was I put in a defrost, I let it come to 20 degrees, and I'm gonna time how long it takes to get down to zero degrees. And that's gonna tell me is the unit operating efficiently or not. Okay, I wanna be somewhere around 20 minutes, but even better than 20 minutes. All right, so now we are at 15 Fahrenheit. Our superheat is 12. Okay, now we're at 10 Fahrenheit. Our superheat is at 627 PSI. And finally, 
After 17 minutes, we have reached our zero degrees Fahrenheit. All right, and lastly, uh, let's go figure out what our suction pressure should be. So it's a TXV, so we're gonna take our actual temp and we're gonna subtract 10 to 15 Fahrenheit. This is just a theoretical number. Okay, this is just gonna tell me if we're in the ballpark. My true calculation will be superheat, which we already got. We got six, that's great on a freezer. I'm very happy with that. But let's just go right ahead and calculate this. Okay, so we're at 10 Fahrenheit. If we subtract 10 to 15, it's gonna give us zero to minus five Fahrenheit. So let's go look up zero to minus five saturation on our PT under vapor. Zero to minus five gives us 27.9 to 32.6. So 27.9, that's, we're getting 27 Fahrenheit. So we are in the ballpark. Our suction pressure is good, but like I said, the ultimate test was the superheat, but it's good to know what your suction pressure should be for troubleshooting. So you know when you're calling for help or you're troubleshooting on your own, do I have high suction? Do I have low suction? It's very important to know this. Same thing with head pressure. Do I have high head? Do I have low head pressure? These things are super important tools when troubleshooting. So know your pressures, but more importantly, know your saturation temperatures. Okay, that's what I focus all my energy on. Temperatures, not pressures. All right, and finally, we want to make sure our crankcase heater is working because of the entire issue. 0.16 amps, we are all good. All right, so on that call, blown compressor. So I had just changed that compressor 18 months ago. So it was T2 that blew last time. So obviously when I saw the winding was opening in, I started getting nervous. So that's why I went crazy on the testing. First, we did the two-second uh, quick check acid test uh, and then it was suggested to me by uh, my buddy Dave there that I met on the internet and as I'm saying that that sounds very creepy um, let's let's call him a colleague within the industry so he suggested hey just test the oil just go get a test kit and I did that um, that tested out great so we knew we were good on that end and finally we found the crankcase heater had failed so basically really quickly the crankcase heater so if that thing fails and what happens is uh, refrigerant will migrate back to the compressor now if your compressor has been off for a while or there's long down times there's a good chance of more of that refrigerant migrating back so in this case this is a covid site that does not use this freezer so that thing might not have turned on for several hours or for a day who knows uh well it probably came on after a defrost but it was probably off for several hours so that crankcase heater failed we're at zero Fahrenheit or lower with the wind chill. We were lower than that. So that was the main cause failure for this compressor. Okay. And then for my text, let's just get into the habit of checking that crankcase heater. Let's make that a regular check when we're going out to service calls. So really easy to check it. Two ways. You can pull off the uh, contactor coil wiring or you can make sure there's not a call for cooling. So obviously if you're up on the roof, don't go all the way back down. Okay, turn the power off, pull that wire off, and then let's test our crankcase heater. In this case, it was 0.16 amps. So now you kind of have a ballpark of what amperage we're trying to get and what we're looking for.